In this video, I'm going to show you a footwork drill and we're going to be working on a footwork pattern that you've probably never worked on before, but it is so important. So if you practice this, it's going to make a massive difference in your game. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you find it helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel as well. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I am really big into footwork. I place a lot of emphasis on a good quality split step because that is the basis of all your shots. There is a reason that every single professional tennis player on the planet does a split step on every single shot, except for if they're already on a full dead sprint run and they know it's going to the other side of the court. But apart from that, every single time they're doing a split step. But there's actually something that comes before that. And this is something that I realized when I launched my program last year. And now I've had a number of people come through the program. Obviously, I'd been emphasizing split step a lot. But then when I started to watch their video footage, I realized that the reason that people weren't doing a split step or they weren't doing a split step at the right time was because they weren't even ready to do a split step because after the shot before, they hadn't recovered properly. So what we're going to be talking about here is the recovery footwork. It's a really simple footwork pattern to master. So we're going to go through it and then we're going to talk about kind of the tactical application that goes with it because we've got the footwork pattern itself of how you do the movement and then we've got where exactly you need to recover to and you want to practice them both. Okay, so obviously the exact way that you recover is going to depend on the shot that you're dealing with, but here I want to focus on the important footwork pattern, something that you should practice over and over again. We'll do the forehand first, then we'll get to the backhand, so I'll show you what it looks like at more full speed, and then we'll break down the important parts. Okay, we'll go with that again. I've hit my wide forehand, and that's roughly what it looks like. We're doing a crossover step and then maybe one or two shuffle steps depending where we need to get to. As you can see, with not many steps, I got from hitting a ball being outside the tram line to recovering all the way to the middle of the court if I even need to get that, go that far because as we'll see in a moment, I might not even need to go that far. But let's break down that crossover step and talk about the important parts of it. Okay, so the key to making a really good recovery step is the way that you land and the way that you load so you can push off. So what I was doing there, there are three things that are going to be important about this movement. Number one is you've got to lower your center of gravity. So you've got to get from up high to down low. Number two is you've got to have a wide base of support. So my feet have got to be far away from each other. And really that happens at the same time that you're going to lower your center of gravity. And then part three is this shin needs to be at a decent angle. So by decent angle, I mean this shin is pointing in that direction so it can push me back off over this way. So this is something that you'll need to practice. As you hit your forehand, practice lowering your center of gravity, widening your base and landing with your shin at an optimum angle. So there's obviously a few different variations of the way that you could hit your forehand. And this is something you'll need to practice, but I can do a mogul step. So I, my hips come round, I land there and then push back. So you just literally rep it out. Just practice hitting shadow forehands, landing and pushing off. So as I hit my shadow forehand, I'm lowering my center of gravity, widening my base, getting my shin angle so I can push back. Variation two is going to be more of a running step. So I'm driving this time off my outside leg, making contact, and then it's the same. I still lower my center of gravity, widen my base, and get the shin angle. So I hit my running step, pivot, down, and accelerate back. Running step. Now obviously, your strength and your flexibility are going to be an important feature here. If you're not flexible enough or strong enough to get into these positions, it won't work. And that's why it's important for you to spend a little bit of time off the court, making sure that your body functions properly. But this is the important part of the footwork pattern. So we're low, we're wide, we've got the right angle of our shin. You then drive back and go into your crossover steps. So we're there, crossover, and then into a shuffle step. Moving over to the backhand side, the key points are going to be identical as on the forehand, but obviously now we're loading off the left leg as the outside leg rather than the right leg. So if we start with the open stance, 
the key points are going to be the same. And this is going to be whether I'm doing a double or whether I'm hitting a single hander from an open stance. I've still got to lower my center of gravity. I've got to widen my base and I've got to get the shin angle so that I can push back and do the crossover step. So for both of your open stances, it will be the same, lower, wider, and drive across. Often though, on the backhand side, you're gonna be hitting from a closed stance and doing the pivot step, kind of like we did with the running step on the other side. But now here, the flexibility requirements increase slightly. So as a single hander, you hit through, you have to come wide and low, so then you can push off in the other direction. So it's something that you're definitely gonna to want to have uh, to practice a lot before it's gonna stick in point play and matches. But the key points, exactly the same. You've just got to lower your center of gravity, widen your base, get the shin angle, and then drive across. Okay, so now you understand what the footwork pattern looks like, you can go away and you can start to practice it. But what I wanna do is just quickly talk about where you recover to, because where you recover to is gonna depend on the type of shot you hit. We've just worked on the efficiency of how we can cover as much ground as possible, but you might not always want to cover as much ground as possible. So I'm not gonna be hitting and then trying to recover into the center of the court. Where I recover to is gonna be based on my ball. So if I hit my forehand, I hit a cross court forehand. Instead of going to the center of the court, I'm gonna be recovering to about here. Because what I wanna do is I wanna split my opponent's best two shots. I've hit it cross court, they can now go down the line and they can go cross court. So I want to go in between those two points to give me the best chance of getting to my next shot. And then if we look at that on a deeper level, I also want to judge how aggressive my shot has been. So if I push my opponent back deep, I hit a good quality deep ball, the chances are my opponent might hit a weaker shot. So now I've hit my shot, I've recognized that it's a good deep ball, my recovery is potentially gonna be up close to the baseline because I might be getting a shorter ball that I can now step in on. If on the other hand, I hit my wide forehand, but I didn't do a good job, it dropped short, now, when I do my recovery, I might be thinking about dropping back behind the baseline. So I'm still, you know, biasing it towards this area here, but instead of being close, because I'm anticipating an easier shot, I've dropped back deeper, because potentially they're gonna find it a little bit easier to attack, and I might need to have to cover that one down the line. So in addition to practicing the actual footwork patterns, you also want to start to think about where you recover to, and then you want to work on the aggressiveness of it. After you hit your shot, expend energy, really focus on doing the best you can to recover into the right position, and that's going to set you up with the best possible opportunity to do your split step at the right time, to give you more time on your next shot to help you prepare, and that's kind of how the cycle goes. Now, something that's gonna be really important for your ability to recover well and do all the stuff that I've just talked about is how well your visual system is functioning. A lot of adult tennis players, their visual system simply doesn't function at a level that allows them to play tennis in the way that they want. So to help you with that, I've created a free tennis vision starter program so that you can start to improve your ball tracking, so you can start to improve your ability to read where your opponent's shots are going, and basically improve every aspect of your game. If you're interested in that, I'll place the link down there, and I'll place the link up there so you can check those out. But otherwise, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, it'd be fantastic. If you give me a thumbs up, if you're not already a subscriber, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. And obviously, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can.